Hi and welcome to the Aria Bark podcast episode 88. How are we all doing? Happy New Year, you lovely, lovely peoples. Hope you're all well. Hope you're getting lots and lots of crafty time in. I am wearing the Lewis by Albina McLaughlin. It's a paid for partner on Ravelry and I think Albina's website. I will leave links down below. It is six euros or five pounds forty ish, depending on exchange rates. We have finished twenty twenty three. Thank goodness. Um, go pick disclaimer in here. This is likely to be a long podcast. Grab yourself a drink. Grab yourself a snack. It is that long. You may need to have a meal in between. So what I'm going to do is first of all, and a wee jibe I will do the usual format run through what I've got coming in what I've got going out um, that's going to be split over two separate bits because we're going to have the 2023 and then the 2024 there will not be two for coming in because I haven't received anything notice how I said I never bought anything I just haven't received it yet the lovely Mandy from Mouse's Makes over on YouTube. Again, I'll leave her link down below. We're in a Zoom group. And she had mentioned that she was planning on getting ready, doing a bit of a stash. If whatever wasn't taken by members of the group would go to a charity shop. And was it the day before, a couple of days before, I'd been going through my stash... Because I've become, I became obsessed with something. You will see shortly. I was trying to pick out yarns for specific projects to do with this thing. And, yeah. I didn't have as much free yarn as I thought I had. Kept seeing lovely colours, picking it out, looking on Ravelry and going, oh yeah, that's attached to that project. I may have partaken quite heavily in Mandy's D stash. Um, I will show you it when, when it comes in. And I'll also speak about the projects later. Well, actually, I'm going to run through what I am taking into this year with me. So I have 13 blankets. That's an issue. Two cardigans, three jumpers, five if you include the two jumpers that have started for patch. That's a thing. Seven shawls, five socks, one hat, three cowls, three mitts, a yarn basket, a Christmas advent stocking that I didn't finish last year. And if we're not including the two jumpers for patch in the actual jumper section, then there's two jumpers for patch. That's a lot of projects. I did spend the last couple of days getting my yarn total sorted getting my Ravelry up to date um, I had a little private cast on party in between Christmas and New Year which kind of leads me into the make alongs that I'm taking part in this year um, the lovely Tonya from Karma's a Stitch had posted a video can't remember when she's on project 7 or 8 and I think she's posting every day or every other day and she's taking part in the 12 Cast Stones 2024. That is run by Angela of Yarn and Yarns. Again, I'll leave Angela's YouTube channel link down below. I am going to say this to all my viewers. A few of us podcasters are aware that if you are using hashtags on Instagram, they aren't always showing up when you search that hashtag. So, I'm just going to put a public information notes out there. If you are taking part on Ravelry in someone's make-along, may I suggest you actually also tag that person in the post. That way they're going to be able to see exactly who's entered the make-along and hopefully your entry won't go missing. I will, for the most part, be entering entering on Ravelry. I'm on Ravelry all the time. Ravelry doesn't bother me. So, 
So I have cast on 12 projects. Um, you will see them. I'll speak about the mirror depths and waps. I will mention them and some of them and coming up. They're coming in. Um, so that's one make along I'm taking part in. The Lovely Mandy is continuing on the Stephen West Marathon. This is no the Stephen West Marathon is no longer for prizes. It is just a bit of fun. I ha I have currently seven Stephen West projects on my needles. Definitely want to be getting them finished this year. The other make along that I'm taking part in this year is the Topping Out Mal by the lovely Belinda of Belinda's Bobbles. And that has been co-hosted by the lovely Mandy. And the hashtag for that one is hashtag Topping Out Mal. Again, I would definitely recommend tagging both Mandy and Belinda in it just to be safe i have decided um now if you had watched the vlogmas videos thank you very much it's greatly appreciated you will know that i have decided to do four projects i think i only had three no i did have four but I finished one yes i had four um as you can see, one of them was the Arachne sweater. That is finished. Well, technically it's no. We'll talk about that later. It is technically finished, but I might need to jiggery-pokery it a wee bit. There was the Iron Circle. I definitely want to get that finished. That was started back in... Oh, I want to say 2022. Yeah, I started that on the 25th of June, 2022. Um, that is now two years it's been on the needles. I think it's about time that got finished. I am, I will speak about it later, I have worked on it, I broke a needle. Um, so that's one that I want to get done. I also want to get my fragmentation show finished this year. I also want to get the night, the, my second nightfall show finished. And Patchy Poodle's jumper. Patchy Poodle has agreed to try on his jumper so you can see it being fitted on him the dog is a nightmare that's all i'm going to say you know how they get you get the people that when you tell them you're going to make them something like every 30 seconds like is it done yet is it done yet is it done yet patch can't speak and when i'm working on it he's literally there and his head's on on my knee his head's on my knee and it's like dude you're like a knitting pain in my backside he constantly pesters me i don't know if he's pestering me to try it on because he's really liking wearing jumpers or whether he is actually trying to gear me on to go right how do i get it finished are you not done yet like really are you not done yet so i'm definitely going to get that one done that is going to be the easier of the two jumpers that i'm making for him i mentioned the 12 cast stones of 2024 the other make-along that I'm taking part in, both of these are both year-long make-alongs, is the hashtag whip be gone 2024 being hosted by Karen of Recreational, Recreational Knitting and the hashtag stash be gone, again hosted by Karen. Again, I'm going to be using Ravelry for both of them. The whip be gone is finishing your whips the stash be gone is anything from last year's stash and backwards i'm doing stash mash again this year so may as well enter it twice i can't even end in my make along the last make along that i'm taking part in at the moment because i haven't found any other ones is the hashtag box of socks 2024 that is being run by Karen over at the Karen Knits podcast. And it's basically just knit socks. I do have my box. It is now empty. I did forget to take said box of socks with me. So I didn't actually take my socks out until about the 3rd of January. So I have got my box... 
so I'm going to stick that there. That's the make-alongs that I'm participating in. Now on to the two that I will be hosting this year. Now, before we get into the make-alongs, there's a couple of wee admin bits that I need to go over. So again, I'm, as I said earlier, if you are going to be using Instagram, the Instagram hashtag as an entry, I am going to ask that you tag Aria Bart Designs in your post. That way I can see it. I'm sure that then brings puts it up as a message. I can then go in and mark it as being an actual entry. If you don't tag me in the post, then I can't be held responsible if your entry then gets lost. If, obviously, there is the option of using Ravelry, if you're unable to use Ravelry, you are more than welcome to email me your entry and I will put your entry into the Ravelry threads. Um, I don't mind doing that. Right, the pri there will be prizes for the finished objects threads, physical prizes. Now, there's going to be monthly pattern prizes for both the charter threads and quarterly physical prizes. I am aware that certain countries have custom charges. So if I was to send something to you, you might incur a customs charge. I am more than happy to shop local to you, pay for something and have it shipped to you from your own country so you don't have the customs charge. Or if you're not really bothered about customs charges or it doesn't really apply to you, then just know any custom charges you are liable for. Obviously, I don't have any way of paying the custom charges on your behalf. Obviously, we are providing the pattern, the pattern prizes, we are providing the prizes. So, yeah. If you don't want to pay any custom charges and you're not really that bothered about a physical prize, you're more than welcome just to enter into the charter thread. You don't necessarily have to enter into the FO thread if you're not that fussed about winning prizes or if you've decided that you're not bringing any more yarn in you can just enter into the charter thread that's fine you do you boo what else is there obviously by entering the make-alongs you're basically giving me permission should your entry win either a pattern prize or a physical prize to use your finished object picture on the podcast to show other viewers, who won, what won, and that sort of thing. Obviously, you're going to get given credit for the picture because your name's going to be attached to it. I think that's everything for that. Now, on to the make homes. The first one is the hashtag ABP stash mash 2024. That is back by popular demand. It will run from the 1st of January to the 31st of December. I have not um, pick the winners for last year yet sorry I've got hairs I will do that in the next few weeks I have literally just closed down the threads it is now the 7th of January and that's me just finished closing the threads down I'll do that in the next couple of weeks probably the next week actually random number it for the next podcast and hopefully by then I'll have either the yarn in or prizes ready to go um usual rules apply anything that is in your possession counts you can of course impose additional restrictions on yourself that's your personal choice my personal choice is i don't care whether it was bought 10 years ago or 10 minutes ago i've got it i'm going to use it end of now if you're choosing to do it that way, just know that you may not be eligible to enter into, say, like, the stash be gone. Because that has to be in your possession by... It's anything in your possession last year. And going backwards. As long as it can be measured in mirrors, it counts. So knitting, crochet, chinazine, crochet, spinning, weaving, circular sock machines and uh, knitting machines are more than welcome to be entered. That's fine. I don't think there's anything else. 
If it is, let me know down below. I will answer it next week. Uh, next podcast. The second make along is the hashtag ABP Scrappy Make Along. 2024 again starts on the 1st of January ends on the 31st of December and that is any scrappy project scrappy socks scrappy blankets scrappy jumpers scrappy mitts or scrappy hats sorry that is Nancy I'm tracking them unfortunately the app is very very loud every now and again she just keeps telling me that Ryan's left home Scrappy socks, scrappy blankets, garments, mitts, hats, anything like that. Um, if you are using a non-scrappy project, say like the flax light and you're turning it scrappy, there does need to be a minimum of four colours. Yeah, it's pretty loose, let's be honest. There is one small caveat. If you are making a scrappy blanket and you manage to get that blanket done, I am going to, depending on the size of the blanket, so I would ask that you actually put in what the size of the blanket finished blanket is, because that's going to determine how many entries you get. Depending on the size is depending on how, on how many additional entries you will receive. Because let's be honest, knitting a pair of scrappy socks is going to work up quicker than making a queen size 90, 60 or 90, 60 or 90 inch blanket. So I think that is everything. I think. Um, something popped into my head when I was reading. I can't remember what it is. Whips, whips are allowed. More than welcome for whips to be allowed. Multiple dippings allowed, um, as long as the other hosts are happy with you entering that. In this week's podcast, we have coming in, lined up, going out, stash mash and whips. In this week's podcast, we have a lot of knitting and crochet. Um, some crochet. Um, there's no spinning, there's no weaving. And time stamps for each section can be found in the description box below, as well as pattern links and other places you can buy patterns and any podcasts that I mention. As you're aware, um, I took part in a Secret Santa advent swap. My swap partner was the lovely Tonya from Karma's Stitch. You can see up there is one of the gifts. There's another one. You will see quite a lot of the gifts coming up. In my advent, the lovely Tonya had gifted me an advent. No, not advent. Had gifted me the advent. But there was also a gift that I could open on the 30th of November. It was a lovely project bag from her mum. I will show you that when I get to it. I will show you just now. This is the lovely project bag. I need to get them moved onto my thing. From Tonya's mum. It is so pretty. Love it. I am now tying up my... Sorry, my washing machine is hanging. In my gorgeous bag were three skeins of yarn. The first one is this loveliness. Can you see that? It is absolutely stunning. Now, this is... From Karma's A Stitch. It is a 100% superwash merino. It's a DK weight. You get 230 yards, which is about... 210 metres. And it's in colourway number three. It is absolutely stunning. I have decided with this yarn to make, and I'll stick a picture in, the Point Edward Mitts. That is a free partner on Ravelry, or you can purchase, or you can download it from the Fairlight Fibres website. I'll leave the links down below. 
It's designed by Fairlight Fibres. Um, modifications. This only comes in one size. I've had to go up a quarter of a needle size. I'll go more in depth into it when I get to it later on. So that was my first lined up. Next is this. I went before I get myself all confuzzled. This is Karma's a Stitch Fingering Weight. Oh, there's the bulb band. Is that right? Yes. It is a 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. You get 400 yards or 360 metres, I think. Is that right? 360. Yes, 360 metres and 100 grams. As you can tell, that's all I've got left. So you will see this coming up later on. It is absolutely stunning. For that, I decided to make the triplet, which is the picture in. It is by Francesca Caricato. I have made absolutely no mod modifications whatsoever. It is a free pattern on Ravelry. I don't think there is anywhere else that you can get the pattern. Because had I found it, I would have said where else you can get it. I'll speak about it very shortly. Andrew's one. Oh my good lord. This was yarn for Andrew. It is absolutely stunning. Again, this is a fingering weight. As you can tell, it's attached to a project. I am going to be making, I'll stick a picture in, the Sockhead Slouch by Kelly McClure. That is a free pattern on Ravelry or you can get it from Kelly's blog post. Again, I'll leave both of them down below. There's 360 metres or 100 grams. I've got it cast on. You will see it very, very shortly. You would think a yarn advent and those three gorgeousness were enough. No, the lovely Miss Tonya sent me a main skein for day 25. This is Boss Kitty. It's a fingering weight yarn. It is, where is it? 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and 263% fibre nerd fun. It is called, well, it was originally called Coraline. Tonya renamed it Caroline. For me, it is lovely. It's absolutely stunning. Um, with this, I have decided to make the Close to You by Justina Lorkowska. That is a free pattern on Ravelry. It is also a free pattern on Lovecrafts. I will link it down below. It is stunning. Now... Obviously, that's not cast on. I think, while I was doing my show notes, I realised that the rule was, when yarn comes in, I need to think of a project for it. Obviously, depending on the kind of yarn it is, at the moment, that's what it's likely to become. However, if I have not cast it on before the next Stephen West make-along, there is possibly every chance that I'm going to then use it in that. But at the moment, that's what I'm thinking. Obviously, it's a lined up. Those choices are liable to change. So that was all the yarny goodness that I got from the lovely Tonya. Again, Tonya, thank you so much for a wonderful advent. You went above and beyond. I loved everything. Mini skeins were gorgeous. I'm still enjoying my mini skeins. Just not as often as what I was during Advent. But I can't wait to get that yarn used up. Get some wonderful projects made with, with the yarns. So, are we ready? I got 
approximately 780 grams worth of yarn which is 3,270 approximate metres. Because obviously depending on the yarn advent, the composition of the yarn depends on how much metrage you get. So we're saying about 3,270 3, metres. Again, I didn't pay for any of it, so it is what it is. I don't care. The next one is on. Are we ready? I might have did a thing. The lovely Mandy had an update. Now, as I said, um, I did place the order. She decided that she was going to close the shop in December. So, she put the update up in November. Oh my goodness. We have November. This is the mouse witch yarn. Year of yarn for November. Oh my goodness, how absolutely stunning is that love it. These are more likely going to be a pair of socks because that's what I was doing with my year of yarn, was making socks. So that's a pair of socks. Then, the accompanying one to that was this one. Excuse the state of the bowl, I'm using it at the moment. This is Mouse Witch Yarns and this one's called Dolly Mixed Yarn. All these are 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. You get 400 metres in 100 grams. I am going to apologise because I am about to sneeze. Apologies. Um, This has gone into a project that you will see coming up. Next is the year of yarn for December. Oh my good lord, look at how stunning that is. Love it. I'm not going to lie, it is gorgeous. This is the year of yarn for December. Again, more than likely going to be soap. It would definitely be socks because that's what I was doing with my year of yarn. This one, again, is definitely going to be a pair of socks. This one is the accompany one to the Christmas yarn and it's called Robin. How absolutely stunning is that? This gives me more full of fuzzies. Again, the minute I seen this, I knew exactly what it was. I knew exactly what she was going for. I was like, oh my God, it looks like a wee bobbin. So, this is definitely going to be a pair of socks. I don't know what the socks are, but it's going to be socks. I also, obviously she'd done the advent, which, superb. We're going to do a round of applause for Mandy and her very first year on advent, which was amazing. And I'm very happy to say that this year Mandy will be dying in my knees. Now, she may or may not have been present while the lovely Nancy from the Kitty Scrapper podcast and I were having a discussion about how this year is my year of minis. If there's a mini skein out there, I am more than likely probably going to buy it. Mandy decided to bring out some some minis and I might have possibly maybe bought them all so I'll apologise for the crinkling but I need to keep them together so this is the festive collection it would have been better if that was around the other way. Can you see? We have some lovely, absolutely stunning colours in that. I do need to get them weighed just so I know exactly how much yarn's in it because that affects my totals. And I need to get them numbered so that I know what ones are in what blanket. Like, 
So. This one is, I have no idea where's the tag for this one. This one is called Vintage Christmas. How absolutely stunning is that? Now, obviously, these colours are not showing up properly, but they are absolutely stunning. This one's Vintage Christmas. Um, we've done festive. This one is called Yuletide. They are stunning. And my favourite one. My absolute favourite one is this one. This is called Sugar Plum. It is stunning. So, we all know I'm a greedy yarn hoarder. I'll admit it. I am a big fat greedy yarn hoarder. Now I'm going to quickly stick these back in because I don't want them to get damaged. I don't want them battered and dug here either because Patch, for some reason, has decided that. Under this desk is his happy place. The Dolly Mitcher I am planning on using in the Kush leg. The year, year of the Sock, November and December, I haven't quite decided on a pattern yet. I will let you know as soon as I do find one. Robin will be Integrated Heel Socks by Albina McGlock. And the Christmas Minis will be going into the solid hexagon blanket that I started during Advent. Again, I haven't finished any of them. I will get some more work done on that, hopefully in the next week. And I'll get some more hexes put in. I may possibly have brought in 800 grams. Technically, it was only 400 grams in November and 400 grams in December. So, so when you split it over two months, it doesn't sound a lot. When you're doing it in one sitting, it sounds like a lot. Because it was 3,200 metres. I don't regret buying that amount of yarn. I don't in any way regret buying that amount of yarn. Obviously, I'm supporting a very good friend's small business. I'm more than happy to spend money for the yarn of goodness that Mandy dies. Yeah, I don't mind. Now, I am very quickly, oh, I nearly knocked an entire tin of juice all over my knitting. That would not have been good. Excuse me a moment while I have a very quick break. I need to go blow my nose. I need to go take some ibuprofen because something has clearly irritated me and it's not going well. I'm kind of hoping that my tin of juice isn't fizzing right next to the microphone. I've got a wee bit away but I've had to stick it up there or at some point that is going to land up over my lips and that would not be good. Again, you'll see why this podcast is called the Yarn Hoarder. For Christmas, as what normally happens, the boys ask me what I want for Christmas. This year, there was a slight difference. For Christmas this year, I had asked Ryan to buy me yarn to make a specific project. So this is the yarn. It's no, it's no the world's smallest blanket. It's literally just one each colour. This is the rest of the yarn that this will go into. That's the actual bag. I wanted to make the Sonia's holiday. I'll stick a picture in. 
Sonia's Holiday of, uh, Mosaic Blanket. The lovely Nancy from Kitty Scrapper Podcast had made it during December. It was a make alone. I knew because at that point I was already doing, I think, three advent projects. There was absolutely no way that I was ever going to manage to make the blanket as well. So I had decided what I'll do is I'm not really needing anything else, albeit rounded by a few other bits and pieces. We have patching area coasters. We also have the Where's Aria and Where's Patch books. Oh my good lord. Can you see? There is there. Okay. So that's Where's Patch. Now you think, two books, exactly the same. Aria would be in the same space. But, can you see, she's not. She is actually, where is she? She's there. Can you see? There she's there. Mm. There she's. My eyesight isn't fantastic. So, yarn. I got this as All Style Craft Special DK. This is 1807, which is a hint of silver. I've got three balls of that. This one is 1425, which is Emperor. I've got three balls of that one. This one is 1062, which is Teal. I've got three balls of that one. This one is 1723, which is tomato. I have three balls of this one. And this one is 1712, which is lime. I've got two balls of that one. The pattern only calls for two each in just one of these. However, the modification that I've made is I've made it slightly wider. The blanket is quite long. I was wanting to have it look... I'm not saying it doesn't look right. It just looks a bit... The proportions don't look right to me. And it freaks me out. So I've just, I bought an extra ball of everything. And I've just made it a wee bit longer. Um, the pattern calls for... I think it's four repeats. So you cast on, I think it's 197 or it's 150, I can't remember. I'm sure it was four repeats that you've done. I have done 245 stitches, which means I've got five pattern repeats. They're all 100% acrylic. You get 295 metres and 100 grams. That's what Ryan got me for Christmas. Andrew, I had asked for more katana 20 gram mini balls again this is for a project that's already on my hook and um, these will be going into the granny stripe blanket which is there they are little 20 gram balls you get 50 meters I'm sure 50 grams 20 meters no 20 grams 50 meters now I'm aware that some of these are already in there I'm not opposed to repeating the colors um, I may possibly need to buy more of the white for that blanket but I don't need it now I've still got quite a few balls left Andrew did buy me 10 I'll turn this around so you can see it. How bright is that? <gasps> Again, 
I will, once I finish recording, I'm going to tip all these into my bag. I'm going to give my bag a bit of a mix so that I don't have all the same colours coming out. I do have my ball bands. So I've put a few colours in. Um, I am now on ball number three of the katana. So I've done a fair bit, to be honest. My goal this year is to try and get some of the scrappy blankets finished. The Tunisian Mitered one, I only have about another 120, about 115, 120 squares to go on that. That is doable. If I spend a good couple of days just working on it. I do have another great big bag full of scrap yarns, which are yarns that I've used last year, balls that I've came across, minis that I've bought. So I do have enough spare yarn. And obviously you'll see that bag's pretty full. Um, That's pretty full. That one's massively full. And there's all the projects that I'm making this year. So I might actually have enough left of this that I can put it in my mitered blanket. Priorities are a hexy, the mitered blanket. What other yarn did I buy? Yeah, I'll stick pictures in. I bought more yarn to finish off Ryan's jumper. Obviously you can see it's done. However, we will have to chat about that later. I bought another six, which is 300 grams. Um, I think I only used one. So I do have enough left for what I'm planning on doing to that next. The West Yorkshire Spinners Nutcracker colourway. Again, every year I buy the West Yorkshire Spinners Christmas colourway to make socks for myself, Andrew and Ryan. Those have been started. Um, I'm just using the Integrated Teal Socks by Albina McLaughlin. I'll talk about them when I get to them. The other yarn that I bought is Yarnsmith Free Spirit Aran. I got colour 1D001, which is Luna, and 1D008, which is Malachite. For that, I decided to cast on the Habitation Throw. Again, I'll stick a picture in. Um, no really scrappy, but what I'm doing is I'm doing one repeat of the Luna, one repeat of the Malachite, and I'm just going to carry that on up. do have three balls each. Yarnsmith's Free Spirit Aaron's 100% acrylic. you got 185 metres and 100 grams. I would like to preference this by saying half of that yarn was a Christmas present. Now, the Amagurumi box, I don't think, is a thousand, a thousand grams. It is. This alone is a thousand grams. So that's 2,500 metres straight off. All the wool warehouse order came to 3,300 grams and 8,655 metres. I'm not going to be disappointed. At the end of the day, I now have yarn for seven different projects, all of which are cast on. One was cast off. So yeah, it's not horrendous. It is horrendous, but it's not the point. My total for November and December is 4,880 grams or 15,125 metres. That, see, when you say it like that, it sounds horrendous. However, I have got, what did I say, seven for the wool warehouse, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, 
14, which is technically finished, 15, 16 projects. I'm not going to cry because that was last year's stash and so far this year I've brought in nothing. My first finished object was this Stephen West MCAL. I will show you here. It's still not being blocked. It is absolutely massive. I did manage to finish it. My ends haven't been moving in because I've not blocked it yet. Done. I used... Now, I've lost the bag with all the yarn in it, so I'm just going to have to do it this way. This is an undyed skein. I used 57 grams or 228.8 metres. The next one is this one which is Jarrow Heritage 4 ply in shade 152 which is duck egg I use 61 grams or 225.3 meters this one is another Jarrow Heritage in shade 131 which is teal I use 78 grams or 288.6 meters this one is my own hand dyed, it's just a black. I used wait a minute, 64 grams or 257 metres, 257.6 metres. I also added in colour pops. So this one is Coop Knits Sock Shea in shade 1001, which is helium. I used 27 grams or 56.2 metres. The next one is Krypton, which is this one. 1002, which is the Krypton. Again, I used 27 grams or 56.2 metres. This one is shade 1003, which is Argon. I used 42, point, no, 42 grams, which is 88.2 metres. And the final colour, which is this one, which is 1004, which is Xenon. And I used 25 grams and that was 52.6 metres. It is massive. It is done. I used 381 grams of yarn. I used 1,253.5 metres. I absolutely love it modifications so if you remember correctly when we got to here i had started hearing stories that people were running the yarn what was name was it that side was this i can't remember whatever side it was on a side actually it must have been on this side because by this side i'd added in so i would like to say one thank you to mandy who done maths um i had done this on a bigger needle size i think the pattern calls for a 3.5 i used a 3.75 so the chances are i probably would have run out of yarn so what i done was i added in the four color pops that brought my total number of yarns up to eight there was no chance i was running out at that point so the lovely Sally had suggested I had done a full repeat of the colours, which are like down here. Or I did do a modification down here. Down here. You repeated the colours, your A, B, C and D, A, B, C and D. And here you just done A and B. That messed with my mind. So what I'd done is I actually halved. You were supposed to do an X amount of repeats of this. I'd done half the amount of repeats so that I could get a full repeat of A, B, C and D in. I did. Absolutely love it. It's symmetrical. I'm happy. Up here, the lovely Sally has suggested, obviously, I'd put the colour pops in. Except when I got to the top, and I think I just repeated it at the top. Did I? Finish that. A, B, C, D, A, B. Yeah. I just repeated it. I didn't bother putting another colour pop at the tip. 
The lovely Sally had suggested, rather than just repeating this on the other side, to do it working back. So, where I finished with my the Argon colour pop, started Argon, Krypton, Helium, and Xenon, and again, I didn't bother putting a thing at the wing tap. I had every intentions of doing the dip stitches. I had started dip stitches. I had got to the first repeat. Yeah, you do the set up lines for the dip stitches. I've done the first set. When I'd come to do the next line after doing all the dip stitches, my total was off. Um, I tried, pulled it out, done it again, had the exact self same problem at that point. I was like, life is far too short for this carry on. So, the lovely Nancy had helped me do bubbles. Now, what I did was I'd done one of the main colours, a colour pop, another main colour, a colour pop, another main colour, a colour pop, the last main colour and... I got a wee bit confused and done this a bit too much. Done that a bit too much, but I really don't care. I, I still love it. And I did the black and the helium two colour bind off, and I love it. Now, I do have a considerable amount of yarn left. There is every chance that I could put a fringe on it. Not done it at the moment. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to block it first. And then at that point I'm going to wear it for 24 hours. And see if I really want to be putting a fringe on. At the moment I'm going to say no. I'm not a massive fan of fringe. I possibly wouldn't then wear it outside. And don't get me wrong, it is absolutely massive. Honestly, this thing is massive. I have tops shorter than this. It is quite a hefty show. I am more than likely going to be wearing it like that. It does... Wrap round. Yeah, absolutely love it. Loved it. Um, I no longer associate this with drama. Obviously, the drama has been forgotten about. It's a lovely, great big scarf. They were a bit of a pain in the backside. The dip stitches were just... I'm not allowed to drink alcohol. And if I carried on with the dip stitches, there was a chance that I would have possibly hit alcohol at some point. Again, lovely knit. The Geo Gradient Shawl is a paid for pattern on Ravelry. It is seven euros or six pounds thirty ish. I wasn't a fan of the, the dip stitches. Mandy from Mrs. Makes Love Dumb. Who else liked the dip stitches? There was somebody else that liked dip stitches in the Zoom group. It's a personal preference. I personally didn't like them. You might like them. That's your choice. It's your knitting. You can do whatever you like with it. It's also available on the West Knits website because I forgot to say that. That was my first whip. Finished. In December. Then we come on to this. This is the Arachne Sweater by Andy Satterland who's Untangled Notes on Instagram. The Arachne sweater is no longer available on the internet. The story goes, Ryan likes spiders. So this was to be made for Ryan's birthday. I had cast on. I was working away on it. The yoke was hellish. It took forever. Now, Ryan's not a big guy. The size of this, that's a size small or a 37 inch. I was sick of picture any Ryan wearing it. Around the yoke fits beautifully. Absolutely perfect. The problem I had is Ryan has great big long arms. From his underarm 
to his wrist is 19 inches. The sleeves were a nightmare. Again, you'll notice on the picture, it fits them beautifully. The original picture, which you'll stick in here, is for a cropped sweater. Ryan is a male. Ryan doesn't need to be showing his belly off to anybody. So, we'd already decided that I was going to put additional length on. Now, there's an additional three inches on that body. I thought, once it's washed and blocked, it's going to drop like a beast. It's going to be fine. Everything's going to be perfect. Well, it didn't drop like a beast. It literally sits just at the top of his hips. When he sits down, it then rides up his back. So it's been decided, albeit this is now finished, I am going to have to, obviously, you see the ends are not woven in. I'm going to have to take that bottom hem out, take it back up. Now, I think I says what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an additional three inches on again. Then I'm going to add an extra, I don't think the ribbon is a full inch so I'm either going to put either an additional inch of rib or maybe just half to three quarters of an inch extra ribbon on it. I use Drop Slima in shade 4305 which is dark blue. I used 477.69 grams or 955.38 meters. The cobwebs was using Stylecraft Special DK in shade 1001, which is white. That's 100% acrylic. The Drops Lima is a 65% wool, 35% alpaca. You get 100 metres and 50 grams. Ryan's fine with alpaca. It is stunning. Absolutely love it now that it's finished. I use 42 grams of the white or 123.5 metres. I used a 3.75 millimetre except for the cuffs, the neck band and the bottom rib, which I used a 3.25 for. So in total, I used 519.69 grams or 1078.8 eight meters here is what's going to happen obviously i'm going to have to rip it back out and put extra length on it when i come to finish it for the second time i am going to deduct the yarn that i've already accounted for this year because i'm not going to count it again twice that yarn's been used it's been done we're finished this finished arachne sweater is going to be included in this year's totals, uh, last year's totals. However, for this year's totals, I'm only going to add on literally from here down. So obviously when I come to do the totals again, obviously I will have to say how exactly how much I've used, but I will have a separate part of actually how much extra yarn did I use so that I'm only adding in the extra yarn and not the whole jumper all over again because that would just be cheating. In December, I managed to craft 900.69 grams and 2,332.38 meters. So it was good. The plan was for December, I wanted to get the Stephen West finished. I did. I wanted to get Ryan's jumper finished, preferably for Christmas. I did finish it for Christmas. I actually finished it on the early hours of the 24th. By which time Ryan had fell asleep on the couch. I managed to get it finished. He knew absolutely nothing about it. It was not blocked and the ends were not moving in. Um, I did suspect at that point that it was not going to be long enough. And obviously me and Ryan had long, long discussions about, I personally thought it needed to be longer, Ryan was not wanting it longer. And I was like, right, I'll do it to where you want it, but I'm telling you now, I really do think it had to be, it needs to be longer. And obviously on Christmas Day, he put it on and he's like, yeah, 
behind the school and go. Obviously, I hadn't brought any of the yarn with me. I had no intentions of bringing any of the yarn with me. The plan was I was going to show you lovely people at first. Now that I've got it on, um, I possibly won't be doing it right away. Um, as you can tell, I am. I've got yet another cold. So using alpaca, which I'm already allergic to, I literally spend most of the day either coughing or sneezing. I'm not about to start working on a jumper that I know is going to make the sneezing worse. So it can just stay in the naughty-ish corner for a wee bit longer until I can get rid of this. I received this yarn on the 30th of November from the lovely Tonya from Carmen's and Stitch. You saw it earlier. I chose to cast on the triplet by Francesca Caricato. I got my cowl done. Now, I haven't woven my end done. There's a wee end here. There's a wee end here. And there's a wee end here. Now, I don't weave my ends in until it's been blocked. I do, no, I'll weave the, weave the ends in before it gets blocked. Then it's just a matter of snipping it. I think I was a bit here when you saw it on you see it there was a bit here when you saw it on the vlogs I did pick it up New Year's Day actually I picked it up I think at that point I'd realised that I wasn't going to hit uh, there was no way that I'd hit my target so I wanted to just start getting stuff off the needles so I did um, this was after I cast on the 12 projects and yeah, I thought maybe I need to start finishing stuff. So that is it done. I am going to take out my bulb markers. I will get this blocked and I will have a lovely new bandana style cowl to wear. Are we ready? It's Is that colour just no? the most amazing yarn you've ever seen in your life. Absolutely love it. So we watch the don't this is going to be absolutely perfect for when when I'm taking the dog out for a walk. It is absolutely stunning. Now obviously once this gets blocked it'll sit flatter absolutely I love this so so much this is genuinely my happy place I am however going to take it off because I'm already sweating buckets I used 87.13 grams or 318.03 meters I do have a teeny tiny wee nugget left this is definitely going to be a Hexy. After that, as I said before, I'm going to stick it in my Chinese miter blanket. I would really like to get some Mandy's yarn and I've got some yarn from my friend Sally. I've got some yarn from my friend Sarah. I'm wanting to get, I would like all of the yarn that's in my fragmentation show. I'm kind of hoping that I'm going to have enough to put in my hexy blanket and to put in the Chinese Miter blanket. I do have a skein of yarn from my... Can I do this without popping my hat? Mm. From these. This was yarn that I got from a Secret Santa swap with Sally last year. I do have a nugget of that left that I can stick in the Chinese Miter blanket. So I am very, very happy. I have one project finished. This year is going well. And we've literally just got a weekend. Obviously I finished this on the 1st of January, but it took me six days to record the podcast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do last year's totals first. Then I'll do this year's totals. My goal last year was to craft 25,000 metres in the November-ish podcast 
I had crafted 17,782.13 metres. The arachne sweater and the geo gradient brought my total up to 2,332.38 metres, which brought my total going out to 20,114.68 metres. Botherations. I had another 4,885.32 metres to work on on my sash. What I didn't do, which technically I could have, was add in the yardage for the hexi blanket. I never did that. I could have added in the tools for the ad frame projects that I'd used up until that point. I didn't do that either. I did not cheat. It is what it is. I'm not going to be shot because I didn't hit my target. I'm a little bit disappointed, but it is what it is. I think 20,000 metres in a year is a lot. The previous income in, the, the income in is an issue. I'd previously brought in 77,549 metres. What was purchased between November and December plus Christmas, plus the advents, brought my total up to 15,125 metres, which brought the grand total of yarn brought in to 92,671 metres, which is a lot. I don't regret bringing it in. I have a box sitting literally right there that has enough yarn to knit a double knitting blanket, the technique, not the yarn weight. I am so looking forward to getting that cast on at some point. The yarn for Mandy, again, I don't regret buying it. It is absolutely stunning yarn. The year of yarn, I'm not going to be able to get that repeated. This year, Mandy's doing the Burstone collection. Again, I'm going to be buying that. I'm going to be buying the tonals that go with the Burstone collection and I'm going to be buying the minis. I'm no... I don't... What I don't think I'll do is just randomly buy for the sake of buying. Again, Mandy is my friend. I'm definitely going to be supporting my friend. I do have a lot of whips cast on. I haven't quite finished that total. The plan is to work out exactly how much. If I finished everything... Now, I think I've got four... I had I started off the year with 40 projects, I'm now down to 39. It's a lot. Let's be honest. If I finished even well, the Ravelry Project Challenge, that is something that I take part in every year. And my challenge last year was to make 30 projects in 2023. I done the 30 projects. So obviously there was 30 projects already done. I crocheted 2008.31 meters. And that 18,106.37 metres. I never spun anything and I never woven anything. Which technically is a lie. I did spin something. I just never finished it. It's a lot that I've worked on last year. Obviously, my Ravelry does give me warm fuzzies. There is still wee bits of gaps where I need to get the pictures finished. I also need to update some of the pictures. I have done all the advent cast ons. They've all got pictures apart from the hexi blanket, which is my hussive. My 2023 was not horrendous. I just need to curb the buy-in. Ish. And actually stop casting projects on. And actually finish the ones that are already on the needles. And that is what my plan is for the vast majority of this year. If Tonya does do another cast on party, I probably will still attend. I probably will cast on one or two projects. I'm not going to make myself miserable by going, oh, you're not allowed to say that. Because let's be honest, it's my knitting. If I want to have 40 projects, if I even want to have 50 projects, it's my knitting. I'm paying for the needles, I'm paying for the yarn, I get to do what I like. I'm aware that that doesn't work with a lot of people. I like to have a choice in what I work on. There are days when I don't want to work on a blanket. There are days when I don't want to work on socks. I get to choose what I craft on. So that's my plan for this year. My tools for 2024. 
my goal will be to craft 25,000 metres. It's going to stay at 25,000 metres until I eventually hit it and then I can decide whether I'm bringing it down or bringing it back up. So far this year I've done 318.03 metres. Again, brilliant start to the year. There's a couple of projects that I could get finished this month. The goal will be to get the arm circle finished. I need that finished hopefully by the end of January. Um, the fragmentation show, the nightfall show and Patches Jumper. Patches Jumper gets worked on loads. I can see that getting done quite quick. Again, the Ravelry Project Challenge. I've decided to do another 30 projects again this year. I've got 40 to choose for. I've got 13 blankets. If I get the Chinese Mitre blanket finished, I'll have 12. Um, if I get the hexagon blanket finished, I'll have 11. So, technically, I get to cast on another project. That's how the math works in my head. The first project that I want to speak about is my hexi blanket. Now, this is one of the projects that I was working on during Advent. I'd started it day four. Pretty sure it was day four of Advent that I started it. I was doing one day on this, one day on another project. Um, I have absolutely no idea where I was the last time you saw it. Um, it goes this way. What I've done, um, can you see? No, you can't. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a picture up. What I'm going to do is I've decided to build it out. I'm going to make it a massive great big hexi. So rather than squaring it off, it's just going to be a giant hexagon. At the moment, I am needing two, four, six, eight. I think I'd worked out I need about 11 to start off with and then I can do the rest of them to make it into a hexi and then I'll just continue adding bits on. I don't think, in all honesty, that it will take me that long to finish this. I do have an insane amount of scraps. The vast majority of these are all yarns that were gifted to me in my advent. This one isn't either this pink or this pink isn't. One of the three pink ones, either this one, this one, or this one, wasn't. Because that was a mini that I got from the week one Ad sock advent from Mousewitch Yarns. This blanket came about because the lovely Tonya from Karma's A Stitch had posted a tutorial video round about the last week of November. She had seen it from Elizabeth, who is Earl Grey Crochet on Instagram and on YouTube. The video at the time Tonya posted her tutorial was five years old. I love this. I can see hundreds of these in my future. I've made no modifications. I have followed it exactly the way Tonya and Elizabeth told you how to do it. I'm doing a four ply version. I could technically do a DK version. I'm loving this. Now, this little donut here is marking where the center line is. Because I'm making it a full high. Are you waiting very patiently to try your jumper on? You're such a good boy. This is where I'm marking the center portion this does need to be at least 11 blocks wide in order for me to get the full hexagon shape again I'm just going to keep adding ones on 
I do have, I think, three or four other Advent minis from Tonya to add in. I will be adding in the leftovers from my Mouse Witch Yarns Advent. Um, depending on how much I've got left because I do want them to go into my Chinese Meyer blanket. So yeah, absolutely adore this. I'm using a 3mm crochet hook. I will leave links to both Tonya and Elizabeth's tutorials down below. This is definitely a project that I want to get done this year and possibly a second one. But I definitely want to get this one finished. I haven't quite decided on the size as yet. I'm going to start out with 11 wide, see what sort of size that gives me and then I can work out for there how much bigger it needs to go. Again, I've got a bag just jam-packed full of, now that you can see it, minis and advent yarns to go in. Um, I won't be doing more than one colour, more than one mini in this blanket. It'll literally just be one and then it can go into other projects. But my priority at the moment is to get the rest of the advent yarn from Tonya put in and then start going through because I did have a bag I don't know where it went I do have a bag that's just leftovers from my, Mandy's advent I'll just start putting them in I will possibly yarn manage that slightly more because Mandy's yarns do fade and oh, actually it could be quite nice that could be quite nice having them fade in That's my plan. I might just make it so that I can have Mandy's one going on a fade run to its side. So that is my first project. My next project is another advent mini. Eh, advent mini. It's not advent mini. Advent project and this is using the mouse witch yarns. Um, this is using my mouse witch yarns advent from last year. This was where it was the last time you've seen it on I can't even remember what date it was that you saw it. But this was the last place you saw it. I'm going to move this marker up. I am not switching out my marker, I'm keeping my Christmas one in. I have finished I think 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, day 13. I am about ready to stick in the light grey. Again, I'm going to say I'm not 100% sure what I was thinking when I done it grey because it kind of looks like, compared to the gorgeous yarns that are in between, I think I should have either done it a cream or, I don't know, yeah, a really dark colour and then it'll look nicer, but it is what it is, <clears throat> I'm going to have to stick with it. I have measured this, I only, well, no measured it, weighed it, I only have 33 grams left and I am 13 and I may possibly need to put another order into the warehouse to get more of this just to be on the safe side. I don't think I'm going to need much more than about 120 grams to get this done. Again, it's going to be Mahusev. It tells you to use a 4mm needle. I am using a 3.75. It's going to make it slightly narrower, but I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference. These are all 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. You get 80 metres and 20 grams. I've got 24 to go in. Obviously, I'm on day 13. This is Drops Fable. It is a 75% superwash wool, 25% 
polyamide, you get about 210 metres, 205 metres and 50 grams. Again, I'm just going to order an extra 50 grams. I've already put one ball in. This is my second. I possibly will need to do a third. I am using the light pearl grey for the garter ridges in between the colours and also for the two colour brioche. I am doing one garter ridge will be with the light pearl grey as the next stitch. The next garter ridge, the next brioche section, it'll have Mandy's yarn as the, knit, the brioche knit stitch and the light grey is the pearl stitch. I am alternating that all the way up. I've done the light grey first, then I tried it with Mandy's yarn as the main colour. I preferred that, but it would look a bit wonky if I just done that all the way up. So what I've done is I've alternated it. So that's the grey, Mandy's yarn, grey, Mandy's yarn. The next one will be another grey. And I'm just going to keep carrying on all the way up. This will be a project that I'm hoping to enter in to the top moth mile, the whip be gone, stash mash, is there any other make I can stick it in, possibly, I haven't quite figured out yet. These are the yarns I've left to put in. I'm putting them in in colour order, I've done day 13, so the next one to go in will be sorry for the crinkles this gorgeousness that is going to be a garter section once i'm finished it will then go into my hexi blanket and it's going to be awesome so that is that one i'm trying to work on this because i do want my advent projects done i think next year i possibly will own patchy I think next year I possibly will have one advent project and then I'll use the advents throughout the year. My next project is the Shortest Day Wrap by Christina Gordon. This wasn't as far along. It wasn't a project I was doing every day. Well, I was doing it every day, but I wasn't doing it for long periods every day. I was literally doing it every time I edited a video. I um, started on the 1st of January, 1st of December, and this is how much I've got done. I've got one, three, four, I'm on day five. Um, I've not long put in, started day five. Again, this, I possibly will keep that as it is and have it that it's a project that I work on when I'm editing podcast or vlogs, or any members videos, stuff like that. I don't need to look, there's like two stitches in the whole thing. Um, the shortest day wrap is a free pattern on Ravelry. Again, I will leave it linked down below. I can't remember if I said the Slay All Day Kill is seven US dollars, or six pounds and four pence-ish. Again, I'll leave that link down, down in Ravelry. If there is anywhere else that you can purchase the pattern, I'll definitely link that down below. That, the Slay All Day Cowl is by Lofty Loops. You can purchase the Slay All Day Cowl and the wrap on, um, I've seen a pair of socks on Lofty Loops website. Yeah, it's on the Lofty Loops website. I will leave the link to that pattern down in the description box below. The shortest day wrap. I don't think this is available. The shortest day wrap is available anywhere else. If it is, I will definitely link it down below. It is definitely a free pattern on Ravelry. It's a nice enough knit. It's quite easy. There's a couple of wee bits that you do... Um, it is knitting the rind, so it's just a quick round-you-go project. It's good for TV knitting. 
it's good for when you're editing your podcast and stuff. Yeah, really, really nice. I'm using the My Yarn Corner Advent from last year. It's a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. You get 80 metres and 20 grams. Again, this was a 24-day advent. That came with the option of a main skein. I don't think I'll put the main skein in. I might do. I, no, I won't because I've already got that attached to a project. Um, I am using a 3.5mm Drops Classic and I've got my little skeletons from Three Loves in Idaho as my little stoppers. I will apologise for the dogs. It's coming close to dinner time and Aria's getting excited. She's a bit like her mum that way. She likes the thought of food. My next project is my Arden Circle. This is one that I'm wanting to get done during the Top and Off Mall. So I have until March to get it done. This was where I was when I picked it back up. So this will be the last place that you saw it. I have put a fair wee bit in. I have broken a needle. It was one of my Knit Pro needles. It wasn't one of the mindful ones, which I know can wait when there's a lot of stitches on and a lot of weight on the needle. It was one of the black cabled ones. I'd moved the stitches along and the next thing, the needle fell off. It had completely detached itself at the join. It completely popped out. I have got it back in. I've left it, purposely left that cable out because I don't want to put it back on a project where there's a chance that that could happen again. So I've swapped over to my higher highers. This is a 4mm with my little band of needle stops. I have a whole whack of this to go. Coming up to 3 inches. I think for my size, the pattern suggests 13. But it's not 13, it's 12.75, but I'm just going to do 13. Unless I get bored and then I'll probably do the 12.75. I very stupidly decided to do Fisherman's Rib. It is hard going, it is slow going. However, can you see how absolutely gorgeous that looks? Um, it is so squishy. Can you see? It's majorly squish. I could technically at this point pick up for the sleeves and start doing the sleeves. However, I have decided that I'm not going to let myself. I need to put my big girl pants on and finish the ribbon. The circle is a paid for pattern on Ravelry. It is six euros or five pounds forty-ish. It is available on Ravelry or on Albina's website. Again, I'll leave them linked down below. I am making a size four, which is 48 and she's because really I should have done a size one, two, three. One, two, th yeah, size three. I've went up to a size four, which is the 48 inches because I'm wanting it quite baggy. It's going to be baggy, it's going to be oversized, it's going to be absolutely fabulous, especially with the fisherman's rib collar. The pattern does give you options of or suggestions, should I say, of knitting it in different yarn weights, alternative, outer edge, nope, the word's gone. Dif different things you can do for the outer edge and it also tells you how to match it up for the cuffs. Again, as I said, I'm doing the fisherman's rib for my outer edge. I will do the fisherman's rib for my sleeve cuffs. I am using Stylecraft Special Iron with wool in the colourway 2494, which is grey jazz neck. 
I have tons of this left. Absolute tons. I think I've just not that long gone in to another one of this. Um, I do have three balls of this to go in. I'm literally only into my, just into my second one. I have done a complete ball, which is 400 grams. This is lush. Absolutely love it. Um, it's an 80% acrylic, 20% wool. You get 860 metres and four, 400 grams. I have definitely used 400 grams. I'm working my way through the second 400 gram ball. I don't think I'm going to use a full three balls. I might need to just go into my third ball. Um, I'm using a five millimeter for the body and a four millimeter for the fisherman's rab. The arms will be done in a five. The cuffs will be done in the four millimeter. It's going to be awesome. I cannot wait, I just need to get it off. As I said earlier, I cast this on back in 2022. Ideally, I want to get this done for the first quarter of this year. If it's the only thing I get done for the top and off mall, I will be happy because I love my DK circle. I definitely want a heavier version. My next project was my first 12 cast stones of 2024 project now this was cast on on christmas eve it was my christmas eve cast on this is the kushleg by kirsten kimsey no longer available on ravelry I have had a look, there isn't anywhere else that you can find it. Um, if I do happen to find it, I will let you know. Um, my plan for this project, this is a wrap. Denise had cast it on first and had finished it. She's like, that's all right. And the lovely Nancy from the Kitty Scrapper podcast had suggested sewing the two ends together to make an infinity carol that's exactly what i'm going to do obviously i'm no a great wrap wearer um this is roughly how wide it is now obviously if i block it i could block it out bigger i think i might just get a light steam and just straighten my edges up a bit and then at that point I'll just sew it together and then I'll just have a great big infinity cowl. I'm enjoying having cowls. Having the dog, I can leave it round my neck without having to actually worry about losing it. I am using the Mouse Witch Yarns Sock Set Advent, all the main skeins. The mini skeins have gone into my solid hexi blanket. Week one, week two, week three and week four. I'm just going to check that. That is definitely week four. Um, this was the last one. No, week one, week two, week three, week four. And the final colour that I'm going to put in is this one. That's got lovely pops, a orange and yellow. It's the Dolly Mixture colourway that I showed you in coming in. There's enough of a contrast, can you see? there's enough of a contrast between the five of these to make it stunning. I'm definitely really happy with how this is going to look when it's finished. Now, the pattern does call for either 24 20 gram minis or you have the option of doing five 100 gram skeins. And doing it like that. So obviously rather than doing a section every day. You're doing a colour every day in the section. And then once you've done. So you'll go one, two, three, four, five will be up here. And then 
you go back to one and you'll just keep building it up that way. I'm using a 3.5 needle, which is what the pattern recommends. I am likely to have a small amount each of them left over. Do I think I'll have enough to do a full hexi? Possibly not. But what I could do is do a hexi with each of the five colours in it. That would work fine. So that is how much progress I've made so far on this. Again, I've not really worked on this since possibly Boxing Day. Actually, possibly Christmas Day because obviously at that point I realised that I would need to skein five. So that is that done. I'm just going to keep working on it. I'm trying to have at least work on some of the projects. Um, obviously the iron circle is going to be a priority. The hexa blanket is going to be a priority. I'm trying to work on stuff. I wouldn't you say monogamously. Because if I just sit and knit in the same project all, all day I get bored. I like to have a couple of projects every day that I can work on if I want to. If I do want to sit all day and make up hexes then I can. So that is my plan. Cast on number two of the 12 days of Christmas was cast on Boxing Day cast on. This is using the yarn from the gorgeous Tonya that I very, very kindly got gifted. This is the, the yarn for Andrew. I cast on the Sockhead Slouch by Kelly McClure. It is a free pattern on Ravelry or on Kelly's blog. I will link both places down below. This is how much I've got done so far. I think I'm heading towards three inches. Well, no, I'm two and a quarter. Um, I've done two and a quarter inches. The pattern suggests for Andrew's size... So, for Andrew, I am doing a medium. This has absolutely masses a stretch. I cast on a medium. So, that means I need to work the rib for four inches. So, I'm just over halfway. Again, this is a quick... Why would you say quick? This is an easy knit. Obviously, there isn't anything involved. It's just two by two rib all the way around for X amount. I could could have made it a bit more interested and changed the rib up. I don't particularly care. It's right here. It's absolutely stunning. Andrew has seen it, Andrew loves it. He is aware that I have cast on a lot of projects, so he knows that this is in the rotation. I'm still taking them to appointments, so what I normally do is either have this or his sock with me, and I just knit on that as I'm going. Well, obviously knows I'm going, because I'm obviously I'm driving. Um, while I'm waiting, I'll just knit on it. When I'm at his, I'll sit and knit on it. So that is that one. Um, is there anything else I'm needing to tell you about this project? Um, I am knitting the ribbon in a 2.75 millimeter higher higher sharp. Once I'm finished the ribbon, you then go into a stockinette section. That'll get knit on a three millimeter needle. Um, the yarn is an 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. You get 360 metres and 100 grams. Again, I don't know how slouchy this is going to be. According to this, I'm going to use about 75 grams. That's with 4 inches of ribbon, 8 inches of stocking stick, I think what I'll possibly do is do the four, then another four. I'll see where that sits on and I'll see how slouchy he's wanting it. Um, I do have a bit to play with. And I, what I will do is once I get to the stockinette stitch, I'll weigh it bef 
actually I'll do a couple of rounds then I'll weigh it and then at that point I'm going to measure how many rows I get to the inch and how much yard, how much yarn that I use at that point. If he is wanting it that wee bitty bigger or wee bitty longer I'm going to know exactly how much that I need it to in order to do it. Again, easy pattern. My next cast on was as another 12 days of Christmas cast on. Um, when I asked Ryan to order me the yarn, my plan always was to start this in January so I have a full year to get it done. It's the Sonia's Holiday Mosaic Blanket by Rosina Plain. This is how much I have got done. This is what it's looking like. Um, I don't think I did measure it. But I will do. This is coming out about 70 inches. As I mentioned earlier, I had done a couple of extra pattern repeats because I wanted it that wee bitty wider. At the moment, I am on the additional chart. Um, the pattern does come with six separate charts. I'm not going to go through the yarns again because I did go through it and coming in. Um, I'm using a 3.5 millimeter hook for the envelope border and a four millimeter for the body of the blanket. Again, this is going to be a year long make. I'm not in any desperate need to get a Christmas jump, a Christmas blanket finished. I do want to thank the lovely Nancy for the encouragement to getting this started. The mosaic blanket is £7.95. That will be slightly different depending on your country of origin and the inflation rates. It is a paid for pattern on Ravelry. Yeah, that's another pattern that I really do love. My next project is back in this bag and it is, make sure I go for the right side, is this loveliness. Now this is the yarn that I got from Tonya for a project for Ryan. Um, as I said before, I am doing the point Edward Mitts by Fairlight Fibres. It is a free pattern on Ravelry or on the Fairlight Fibres website. I will leave that link down below. This is how much I've done so far. I have tried, these look mighty small, but I have tried these on Ryan and they do seem to fit. Um, they've not been blocked. Obviously, once it gets blocked, it'll ease off a wee bit. I think, if I remember correctly, I did extra ribbon. Or did, I might have, actually I might not have done. No, I done three, the three inches of ribbon as the pattern had asked for. And I'm just working up the hand. I think what I might need to do is do a wee bit more on the hands. They literally come to about here. Obviously, Ryan does have quite big hands. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the additional rounds that it's asking for right now. I'll put them in. Obviously, I've just separated for the thumb gusset. I'm going to do a few more rounds on this and... So you do the hand first then go back to the thumb. You do the hand first and then you go back to the thumb. I'll see how much. Um, it is asking for four inches a rib once you've done the number for the hand. So I may just increase it at the hand and then get it up to his knuckles. And then see what four inches at that point is. For me, four inches for my knuckles is like well over my hand. So I think that should be fine, to be honest. I maybe need to put maybe half an inch more on on the hand. I have this much left, which is quite a fair bit. 
Um, I'm not overly concerned what I might do though just to be on the safe side just once I've done a few more rounds on the hand I maybe do the thumb gusset just to be on the safe side right what it's asking you to do is you do a wee bit of jiggery pokery around about here and then I ask you to do the one by one twisty drib till it covers the thumb I'll maybe do that once I've done an extra couple of rounds on the hand that way I know apologies apparently my iPad storage was full where was I? I've absolutely no idea so that's the plan for these I'm just going to keep working on them these are actually quite a nice nap for watching TV there isn't really that much needing to be done on them I've got the second one started it is on just a cable at the moment just to keep it on I was getting a wee bit confused I've done the two of them together but I wasn't sure if there was left and right instructions there is any it's just the same so that one's ready to go once I get this one finished my next project is using the six balls of the Yarn Smiths Free Spirit. Obviously, I've got three of the Luna, three of the Malachi, and I am making the Habitation Throw by Helen Stewart. So, this is it here. This is the front. I need to stick a stitch marker in. Got my little leader bird in to mark. That's the front, and it's also where I am right now. What I'm doing is every part and repeat I'm changing between the Luna and the Malachite. I'm just going to keep going up. Obviously, this won't be an entry into my scrappy make along because I'm only using two colours. As I said earlier, the plan is going to be I'm just going to keep changing colours all the way up until I've used a full ball. Once I've used a full ball of each colour, on the second ball, I'm then going to start measuring how much a repeat takes. Once I get to about the half... It will need to be before the halfway mark of the ball... I'll then decrease it back down. Um, I'm just going to work on it. Obviously, I don't know how big this is going to be. I am about to go into my second repeat. And I am currently sitting at about five and a half inches. I'm not actually six inches. I'm sitting at the now. Uh, and I've only done two repeats. I'll see how what the measurement is once I hit a full ball each of them and then I can pretty much work out how much it's going to be after that if I need it bigger again I may possibly end up doing just the four balls and then with the extra ball that I've got I can always make a hat or mitts or something so that is that one the Habitation Throw is a paid for partner on Ravelry. It is either £6 or £18 if you buy the Knitvent ebook. Um, it's a paid for partner on Ravelry. If there is anywhere else you can purchase it, I will link it down below. This is just 100% acrylic. You get 185 metres and 100 grams. I am using a 5.5mm Knit Pro Mindful needle. Again, it's the easy knit. There's only one row where you need to actually concentrate. Um, I had been doing my eyelets wrong. Can you see? I am not doing the eye cord the way Helen has it written. I'm just doing a Stephen West eye cord where you knit it on the front, slip the last three, knit that on the reverse, slip the last three. So that's pretty much what I'm doing. Again, it's an easy knit. It's going to be one that I work on every now and again. 
Um, I don't think there's anything else I need to tell you. I will need to find get more needle stops. Or better still, find the bag full of needle stops so I can get them on. My next project is a project that I found on Instagram. Um, I can't remember if it was a reel or just a post. This is the Snowfall Sweater Scarf by Chantel, is it Maya, Gus Maya Goshima? Who is Knitted on Instagram. I saw this and fell in love with it. So much so that I literally brought up Ravelry and went and bought the pattern. It is amazing. Obviously, this is what I've got so far. Now, I did have about six or seven inches worth of cuff. However, I got a wee bit excited and didn't realise that you, the whole thing's knit flat. I didn't knit it flat, I knit it in the round and then had to take it back out. Um, it does say to leave three foot of an end. I'm not going to leave three foot of an end. I'll just sew that end in and then just sew the end in when I see, come to seam the cuffs. But it's no a lot. Let's be honest, this is the front. I mean, need to see Denise about getting more front and back, eh, front progress keepers. What was the word that was looking for? Don't think I have any. I think all I've got left are back. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick one of my red bulls on, like that. Stuck a red bull on, that's the front. I'm sure I've got an absurd amount of ribbon to do. For my size, I need to knit 14 inches. I'm just going to keep working on it. Modifications, I'm making absolutely none. I am doing size B, which is 109.75 inches wide. And obviously, it's going to go around you. So I'm not that concerned that it might be a bit too big. I am using Pound Stretchers Luxury Aran in shade 25, which is cream. It's 100% acrylic. You get, I don't know how many metres and 300 grams. Um, it's an arm, so you're looking at the 600 metres and 300 grams. Um, that's what I'm going to base it on. I'm just going to keep working on it. It's going to take forever because we all know... I so enjoy doing ribbon. Um, I'll just work through the pattern as it's written. I'm not planning on making any major modifications to it. Snowfall sweater was the 12 days of cast on number 6. Um, it's a paid for pattern on Ravelry or on Etsy. On Ravelry it is $10.50 Canadian... $10.50 Canadian dollars or six pounds fifty one ish. You can purchase it on Ravelry for nine pounds twelve. Obviously, it's going to be slightly more expensive on Etsy because of the fees. There, I'll leave both of them linked down below. Obviously, you do you. I'm using a five point five millimeter for the arms. Then I go into a six millimeter for the body, and then I do the increases, decreases, and hopefully. By the end of the year, I will have that finished. My next cast on is cast on number seven for the 12 days, 12 days, no 12 days, anything, 12 cast ons of 2024. Oh, I can't remember when this came in. But a wee while ago, the lovely Heather sent me this. It's a random gift. It's Bully Adventures. It is the Super Sock. It's 75% Supposh Merino, 25% Nylon. You get 425 metres. This is in the colour we are replaceable. I had said at the time that I was wanting to do the Woven Fingerless Gloves by Laura Echo. That's what I've started. This pattern isn't available on Ravelry. I don't think it is available anywhere else except the Sock Yarn One Scheme Wonders which was a book that Heather had sent to me. So I'm making use of all my gifts from Heather. Obviously I use Knit Companion, so what I've done 
is I've taken, I've scanned in the two pages and I'm literally, I've literally just uploaded it as a PDF so I can use it on Knit Companion. I have just started the pattern. Obviously the pattern starts here. I got a little bit confused and it could just be because I've not made a lot of mats but this is patterned on tree here. There's the back because there's the cast on edge so that's the back of my hand. There's the front. The pattern's on the hand as well. Now I had thought what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep it plain. I'm not that experienced in mats to be going, oh, well, I'm just going to modify this barn. Um, I think what I will do, for the length of time that I'm going to have the mats on, obviously it's only going to be when I'm driving. Now, I did what I did do was I did put it on. It doesn't actually... I think if it was cables, it probably would annoy me. Because it's just knit and pearls, it doesn't make that much of a difference, to be honest. So I don't think it's going to annoy me that much. It is absolutely lovely. I have made a slight modification. Um, this was where I asked you to stop. Right, so I asked you to stop there. That is where it tells you to stop. That's an awfully, awfully shallow cuff. What I did was I added on extra rounds. See, that's a better length for me for a cuff. So I did put additional rounds on. I am just continuing with the pattern. I think I have... So I've got eight more rounds to go. And then I'll measure it again. Because I made it that wee bit longer in the cuff, what I could do is put an extra pattern, full pattern, pattern repeat because I asked you to do one and a half pattern repeats and maybe do two full pattern repeats and then do the gusset and then that'll add a wee bit more length we'll try it and we'll see it's a really nice pattern um, I do need to learn to actually read the pattern and not just assume that I know what I'm doing but again this is another one that I'm just going to keep working on it'll be a good one for when I'm sitting in the car and watching telly. I will leave a link down below to the Sock Yarn One Scheme Wonders on Amazon. It won't be an affiliate link. I dare say you could possibly try your local library or some sort of book, ebook buying app. Now, my next three cast ons are all the same project. But they are in different bags. So, start with my one. Normally, the way it works, when I do Christmas socks, Ryan gets his first, then Andrew, then me. This year, I thought, stuff it. Um, I My goal is to eventually have at least anywhere between 24 and 31 pairs of Christmas socks to cover the whole of the festive period. When I bought the Wish Your Spinner Signature 4 ply, this is shade one one double double one double six, which is nutcracker. I bought three, which I normally do with the Christmas socks because I normally buy one for me, one for Andrew, and one for Ryan. With the exception of the other year, when I showed Ryan it, he was like, I'm no more than spark boy socks. And I was like, right, fine. So for that point on, I then purchased Ryan and Andrew two different colourways to make their Christmas socks from. So when I was ordering my yarn for Christmas, obviously I said to Ryan, there's a couple of bits that I'm wanting to buy. Is it okay? Well, part of it was these for his jumper, so he's not going to turn around and say no to that. I was like, There's, I'm wanting to buy the best Yorkshire Spinner's wool and I'm also wanting to try this yarn. He's like, aye, that's fine. At that point, I did not notice that this was sparkle. So I ordered it and it came. 
and I think I was on Zoom at the time and I was like, sweary word that rhymes with duck. That's sparkly. Andrew doesn't care. Um, he's just grateful for a pair of socks. So obviously I knew he wouldn't be that fussed. However, I was under the impression from Ryan that he didn't want sparkly socks. So when he came home from work, I was like, we need to chat. This is a situation, they are sparkly, are you wanting it? Or will I just give somebody your ball and go back on and order you something else? And he's like, oh, I really like that. I don't mind it sparkly. I never said I didn't like sparkly yarn. Yeah, you did. Short story, very long. Ryan now doesn't mind sparkly yarn, apparently. So, I'll show you mine, then I will go through the rest of yours. So, this is the Basic Socks with Integrated Heel by Albina McLaughlin. This is cast on number eight. Yes, mine's is eight, Ryan's nine and Andrew's is ten. Castle number eight. I am doing the cayenne pepper for my socks. I'm doing bubble gum for. Is it bubble gum? I haven't said, but I'm pretty sure it is bubble gum. And sour apple for Andrew. So it goes red. I'm red. Ryan's blue. Andrew's green. That way, when I do the great big sock wash, because I do still take Andrew's socks back to wash. I'll know whose socks are who. This is how much I've done. Now, I cast these on. I cast my ones on on the 30th of December. I have done 40-ish, 45 pattern repeats. I need to do about 60-ish rows for my size. For my size, I need to have it. 18 centimetres, so I'm going to use my handy dandy sock ruler that I got from Donya. Yeah, you're looking at another, yeah, that'd be about right. This does say to stick this in and measure it to here. These are US sizes. I have not marked up. The UK sizes, so I'm just using the ruler on. Help for the right way around. I'm just using the ruler that's on the back. I am using. I did buy myself a pair of the Chowgu US ones or two point two five millimeter needles. These are the red lace needles. They're wash. That is my sock. Um, I'm just going to keep working on it until such times as it's done. I'm going to quickly hop over to cast on number nine. For Ryan Sock, again, these are done on a 2.25, exact same as mine, 64 stitches, 2.25. I've done the dough. I've not even added the colour in. I think the plan is I'll just rotate whose sock gets worked on. As I said on earlier on, what I do is when I take Andrew to his appointments, I will generally take one of his projects. So either the hat or his one. His one has had a wee bit of work done on it. Um, Andrew's socks are a 72 stitch and a 2.25 tend to do has on a slightly tighter gauge. Um, Ryan can get away with a 2.5. I can get away with a 2.5. Andrews need to be bulletproof because that boy is horrendous. Um, again, he's sour apple. Ryan is bubble gum. I am cayenne pepper. I don't know where my chocolate lime went because normally Andrew would be chocolate lime. But I've had to give my bright green dough. I don't think it looks that horrendous, to be honest. Let me see. 
It kind of goes. It's for Andrew. He doesn't care. He does have this and another one of his socks. So I know for a fact he's not really going to bother. Again, I'm just going to keep working on them. The Basic Socks by Integrated Heel is a paid for partner on Ravelry. As I said, it is four euros or four pound, four euros, four fifty, sorry, euros or four pounds and two pence. Right, I'm going to say four pounds because it makes it a lot easier. For the four pounds, you're getting two patterns. You're getting a toe up version and you're getting a cuff down version. In the pattern, I'll be now will tell you how to modify it for a. Uh, you can use it as a DK weight, you can use a sport weight, or you can use a fingering weight. She will give you a rough idea of what needles to use. She also gives you a really handy guide on page two. If you don't know the actual foot measurement, and all you've got is a shoe size, so it does from a UK size four up to a UK size 12. She'll give you the measurements both in centimeters and in inches. As you can tell, love Albina's pattern. I have knit loads of these socks. It's a really, really nice fitting sock, as I showed earlier. These are the Integrated Teal socks. Absolutely love them. I've got about five million pairs. Absolutely adore these socks. Um, I will swap it out for a heel flapping. I'll swap out a heel flapping gusset for the integrated heel. Um, German cast the German. Can't remember that heel, but the German one. It is literally my go-to heel. Um, I will try in a different heel every now and again, but nine times out of ten, because I know the pattern, I will automatically just put that in. So that is cast ons eight, nine, and ten. Cast on number 11 and 12 will require my glamorous assistant. Cast on number, number 11 is the Brioche Pop Sweater by Stephen West. This is how much I've got done so far. I have just got to the start of the increases. I am using Stylecraft Special DK in Storm Blue. It is shade... 1722. I have three balls of this. I do not think I'm going to need three balls. If I remember correctly, Patch is an odd shape. Um, he is fairly tall. He's got wee skinny legs. He's got a wee skinny body. However, he is really, really long. So, I am going between size six and size three so obviously for his neck it's a size five for his body circumference it's a size five for the yoke length it's a size because he does have a really long Main for the leg circumference, it's size three, and for the body length, he is a size six. Other color that I'm using for the brioche, obviously, this is the special DK. This is Pound Treacher's My Baby Speckle, it's the shade nine, which is the lemon. Light blue and green specks. It's obviously white. I've got hundreds of this. That's about two, three hundred grams. That's about one hundred and fifty grams. So I've got all that to make a jumper. Um, I do have more of this in my stash. Does the pattern even say how much yarn you're supposed to use? Yardage. Four patchy size. For the main colour, you're looking at about 300 grams-ish. For the contrast colour, when you're looking at about 600 grams. That's a rough estimate taking it on the bigger size. Obviously, he's mismatched. So, I am using a 4mm 
how high sharp. Right now it's on a 16 inch cord. I can still get a fair bit on here before I really need to go up a needle size. The one issue that I am having is cables. Um, I seem to have a lot of projects all wanting, all wanting the same size cables. So I don't know whether I might need to purchase some larger, even larger cables, but some multiples of either the 24 inch and 32 inch. The Brioche Pup Sweater is a paid for pattern on Ravelry. It's either seven euros or six pounds 30 ish. Um, it is part of the West Nets Pets, Pet Nets 1 ebook, both of which can be purchased on Ravelry or the West Nets website. The ebook is €20 Euros or £18-ish. I'm just going to keep working on it. I am taking my time with the brioche one. I do find brioche in the round a lot easier to work on than flat brioche so i'm just taking my time i'm just reading the pattern what in the pattern as it's written there is slight modifications that you make if you're needing to make for like me i need to make a larger yoke because patch fees it basically sits for these neck to where his underarm is that's quite a big gap i'll show you on the next pattern is there anything else no, I don't think so. So, my final 12, 12 cast ones of Christmas is the Dustlin Dog Sweater, which, again, is by Stephen West. It is, again, from the West Knits Pet Knits ebook. Again, same price as the Brioche one. is €7 Euros or £6.30-ish. Um, the ebook is either twenty euros or eighteen pounds. That's slightly different depending on where you live, obviously. I have made slightly more progress on Patchy's dust and swear. We're going to get it out first of all because it gets awfully, awfully excited when he sees it. So. I'm going to call my handy dandy assistant, Patchouli Poods. Are you wanting to show the lovely people your jumper? Are you? Oh, you're so clever. Right, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, what a clip. I know you love your jumper. You might need to come up on your mum's knee. Right, can you put your head over that way? There you go. So, this is Patchy's. You're sliding. Do do your sliding. This is Patchy's underarm here. Obviously, this this is where it is at the moment. I've got about that much more to do of the pattern for it to fit. At that point, I split for, you look so handsome in your jumper, you really do, you look so very handsome. At that, wait, Patchy, you realise dad was in the living room, I thought he's a wee to snuggle with dad. I think at this point, it's just got a bit more of the broken rib to do. So the yoke needs to be seven and a half inches. Yeah, I'm going to need at least one more repeat. I have got to the end of the, I think at this point, obviously I've done the 38 rounds, the extra yoke rounds. So I now need to go back and start on the diagonal rib, which is up here. You see, that's the diagonal rib. That's about an inch. Take it up to the seven and a half that I'm needing 
Again, I'm just going to keep working on it. I may possibly work on this a bit more. Obviously, Patch is quite a needy puppy. I've got my wee bats on. So yeah, I've added on the stitch marker to mark my progress. This is my beginning of the round. Modifications that I'm making to the pattern, I'm just going to work over several sizes in order to fit Patch. The great thing about the West Knits jumpers is it does give you really good details and instructions on how to modify the pattern so that you do get the perfect fit for your pup. His neck is a size 4, his body is a size 5, the yoke is a size 6, the legs are a size 3 and the body is a size 4. Um, I am using So Crafty Iron Yarn which is an 80% acrylic, 20% wool. You get 80 meters, 800 meters and 100 grams. This is it here. This was yarn that I had originally started to make all oh, that cardigan for Andrew and it went nowhere. I've recast it on as patch jumper. It's working up lovely. I think it will bloom slightly once I come to block it. I am using a 4.5mm Knit Pro Mindful Needle and I'm on a 32 inch, I'm pretty sure it was a 32 inch, yeah a 32 inch cord. That lets me check for fit. When I separate for the sleeves I may possibly put it up to either the 40 inch just so I've got a wee bit of wiggle room so he's no knocking off the stitches but as far as I can see this is definitely going to fit him it's a nice fit it's going to obviously as you can see it is fairly stretchy it's going to allow it to grow with him as he gets a bit more padded on the outside I realised that was a lot. It is not all my whips, as you can see, the shelf of shame is still quite full. There is quite a pile here. I didn't really have any business casting on to an additional 12 projects to the ones that already had started. But my plan is, is to get as many of them finished as possible. Um, if you've made it this far, congratulations, you've won a medal. I do hope you've managed to get some decent crafty time in while you've been watching this epic, epic video. Some plans for the upcoming week. I am going to make a concerted effort to work on Iron Circle. Um, Patches, Dustlin Jumper, because he does kind of need another jumper. The lovely Mandy from Mouse's Make has very kindly sent Patch some yarn that she was getting ready so they will make some lovely other jumpers obviously in the ebook the with pet knits ebook um you've got the brioche jumper you've got the dustlin jumper um there is a Ryan joke that I'm going to make Ryan a matching jumper and I will also have the matching Dustlin jumper so that Patch, we can have family jumpers. Um, Andrew Whitney won't a jumper. Um, there's a faded rib jumper. Now I'm not going to click on that because I keep downloading patterns and I don't mean to. Um, there is the brioche one, the bubble one. I do think it would look exceptionally cute in that. Um, I will need to look up how I make the back a lot longer than his chest. Obviously, Stephen West has French Bulldogs. Their chests and their bums are quite close together. Patch does have... The one thing I'm not wanting is I'm pain on it. So I would rather the chest be slightly higher up higher up as opposed down towards his male puppy dog bits 
so he doesn't end up paying on it. There's a ribbed, just a plain ribbed one. There's the marled one, which holds two fingering weights together. I don't have a lot of fingering weight acrylic scraps. That might, the marled pup sweater might be his going out jumper, where he's no, it's not going to be like an everyday jumper. The marled one doesn't necessarily have to be marled. I could just use DK and just fade it in. Do it a bit scrappy. So yeah. Um I am now into making dog jumpers because I am that sad. I am gonna go. Um I am going to go lie in a darkened room for a bit. Hopefully let the painkillers kick in. Um, it is Sunday today, so if I can't get rid of this migraine tonight, you're looking at Tuesday-ish before this is going to go up. Hopefully I will get it uploaded at some point tomorrow once I get it edited. Again, thank you so much for bearing with me during this epic make-along make long it's not make long it's a podcast i will hopefully be back in the next couple of weeks and th i do have things planned for what i'm planning on doing this year some of it is still brewing over in my head so i need to actually sit down and plan out what is manageable and what isn't manageable um again please uh like, subscribe, do all the YouTube stuff. If you are interested in anything, need to know anything that the links don't cover, please by all means contact me down below. I will get back to you ASAP. And I hope you have a very, very crafty few weeks. I hope your stitch counts are all correct. I hope you have a fabulous start to your new year. And if you hate new year, I hope you get lots of night time. And I will see you back here again soon. Bye.